Hi, it's me. I will uh, decide to make another video before the news. So, yeah, today is going to be about basic geology. I don't have any rocks. Tomorrow I'll be leaving the house to ride the trains out to a uh, one of the uh, train stops out by our airport, and I'll be picking up a friend. So I'll look for rocks along the way and, you know, give an idea about them. But this is just a generalized overview. Um, I'll be talking about what the three types are and the year, and then the idea of a geologic time scale, dating of materials, and the rocks. There, you see the rock cycle? Maybe. <laughs> I don't have scripts for this. I just sort of make it up on the fly and have all the information right here on my computer. I probably should have a script, but then I read it too much and I don't memorize it very well. Uh, sometimes I don't know how people do this stuff by having scripts. I mean, it's understandable that if they don't, you know, write or, you know, if they're not trying to do a couple things at once, they just sort of like dictate to something they drew. <clears throat> Anyways, so, yes, geology, basic overview. And this isn't even 101. This is like day one. Geology is the study of the earth, the solid earth, rocks. It's all that, all that stuff out there. Yeah. No, my geology teacher called anything that wasn't a rock or some sort of fabrication. Um, there's rocks and critters. That's it. There's rocks and critters. There's either dead things you know, inanimate things, or there's living things. There's water, but that's still kind of even a part of geology. I mean, geology is a huge science. But it's, uh, anyways, yeah. So, it's the study of rocks. It's not just like volcanoes. Well, I may have a whole section on volcanoes. They're really interesting. <laughs> They're just really cool to look at. Um, so, yeah, um, it's geology. So it, it's the study of rocks um, with, the, with the earth, you have to deal with the fact that it's been around here for a long time. It's to the point of unfathom, unfathomably long. It's, you know, there's, a, there's something beyond time immemorial. Why is the earth here? Because it's always been here. We really cannot, honest, we cannot, we can look at stuff that's old, but it's almost too much for our human minds to comprehend the age of some things. Now, before in some of my daily blogs that I've talked about, my quartzite that I had that I mysteriously lost, um, it's 1.6 billion years old. Well, that's the formation that it comes from. Our, the rocks around there are 1.6 billion years old because that's when that layer of the Earth was formed. Um, which brings us to dating of materials, like rocks and stuff. There's specific, or what do they call that here? Absolute dating. Absolute dating is when you're able to get an absolute or you at least get a number, even if it's a range. You get a number of years or millennia, or you have some sort of like you can take a dart and put it on a timeline somewhere. Even if it's like two darts and you're like somewhere between here and here. You have an idea where it's at. Regardless where you find it, you know that it's that old. And that could be done through radiometric dating, uh, carbon dating, um, all that jazz. You know, it's like you kind of have a relative, you know, even uh, nuclear, nuclear breakdown of materials. You have an idea when it gets close because you know that there was X material to begin with. And now you know, let's say, plutonium has... You know, it's 12,000-year half-life, whatever its half-life is. 
I'm forgetting off the top of my head. And you find out that you have one quarter of the material there. Well, it's obviously gone through, you know, two half-lives. And this is always an average because a half-life is the chance. There, there's a percentage chance that it will break down into another material. And the half-life is when it gets to the point where half of it is remaining. So when you have a quarter, you've gone through two half-lives. So if you're looking at, like, you know, uranium, and you have a quarter of the original material life, you realize it's been through two half-lives, and that means 24,000 years. Uranium probably has a lot longer than that one. Because, but, but that's how you can figure that out. Because you're like, okay, well, this rock has been here about 24,000 years. You know, you have way better number than, you know, the relative dating. Relative dating. This one is like, duh. Um, you place a piece of paper down on the table. You place another piece of paper down on the table. Let's say you place down a red piece of cardboard paper. Then you place a yellow one down. Then you place a blue one down. Then someone comes by. They don't necessarily know when they were placed there, but they know you pretty much placed the right one there first. <laughs> you know, and this doesn't necessarily work in that case, but you understand that if you come up to, like, a big sheer cliff on one side and you see bands of rock, that that rock, uh, you know, the band of rock down here was there before the band of rock here, which is before the band of rock here. I mean, it's just that that's how things work. They just lay on top of each other. And for, like, the caves, when you see caves underground, that they happened after the rocks were in place. Now, the question is, when did it actually happen? Because all it needs is it was there, the cave was there before the, or the cave was there after the ceiling. Um. And that gets, but you can, you, you just sort of like look at it and you go, okay, that, ha that laid down before that and that laid down before that. You have no idea when that happened. It could have been a hundred years ago, could have been a thousand, could have been a million years ago. But you know which one came first. You know, another example, the final example. You don't necessarily know when the letters of the alphabet came to be. Who knows when they felt them up? It could have been like, well, let's get A and then B. And then 10,000 years later, they get C. It wouldn't be 10,000 years, but like 10 years later, they get C. And they just put them in that order. You don't know when they actually came. You just know that the order they came in. And that's relative dating. Um, yeah. Kind of nail on a floor thing. Anyways. I don't want to make this one too terribly long. Education's fun, but it gets boring if I keep rambling. <laughs> don't want to be one of them kind of teachers. Um, then we're going to go on to the rock cycle. And this will explain when, how you can date a rock. Okay. So, there are obviously two forms of rock. There's liquid and solid. Now, in the physics community, um, when you get, when you do a phase change, everyone calls it freezing, but it's not. When a liquid turns to a solid, it crystallizes. That's actually what the term is called, crystallization. And when it goes from a solid to a liquid, it becomes a magma, or it, becomes, it melts. And when it goes from a liquid to a gas, it evaporates, and when it goes from a gas to a liquid, it condenses. So, to go on up, you've got solid, liquid, gas. So you've got solid, it melts, and then evaporates, and then condenses, and then crystallizes. 
that order makes sense to me, and as long as it is, and I may, who knows, I may throw annotations in this. This isn't necessarily that it has to happen today, and I could put this up tomorrow. <laughs> so, but the rock cycle, let me turn this thing so I don't have to look much, is there's magma. Magma, magma. It is the, the liquid red stuff that you see spewing out of the ground. It's other kinds of it, but yeah, all that gooey red stuff that you see. Magma crystallizes and turns into rock. It turns into igneous rock. That's, according to this, magma crystallization igneous. Now it can branch off from there and go in other places, but when you see lava pouring out of, say, Hawaii, uh, the Hawaiian volcano, or <laughs> what's this called, Efigdal, up in Iceland, and you see all that lava and it hardens, that's turning into an igneous rock. There's no other rock it's turning into. Once you get an, is, once you get an igneous rock, and I can go into a whole video and say, igneous rock, and I can list the types of igneous rock that they are and kind of what they look like. So, um, igneous rock. It can go through erosion, which is pretty much the breaking down of the material. Erosion, the breaking down, it's weathering of it. It's like Technically, the idea is erosion is any time when you take something and it's no longer its hull. And you can do that through wind, you can do that through water, you can do that through life. There's such thing as um, bio-weathering, um, root wedging, we'll talk about that one later. Um, so... Yeah, there's erosion where things start, like the rain hits the side of the rock and it pulls away material. That's erosion. As it's moving, that's transport, it transports it somewhere. That's when it rolls down the hill and gets put into rivers. And if it's really heavy or the river's moving really slow, it falls to the bottom and that's deposition. And as more things pile on top of that, more things pile on top of that, it gets to diagenesis. Diagenesis is when things start compacting because there's so much weight on top of them. <laughs> You've seen the guys on the on the muscle man things where they're just like they're about ready to collapse under the weight they're trying to pick up. Yeah, that's diagenesis. <laughs> and you could tell your friends when you ever see that, be like, that guy's about ready to diagenesis. And they were like, What? And you can tell them that it's when rocks compact on top of each other and basically they cement together and they kind of make and they make sedimentary rocks because it's sediment that get the, gets pushed together and it makes rock. Uh, it makes sedimentary rock. Now the sedimentary rock can melt and become magma again. It would usually do that if, say, magma, magma or lava, when it's on the surface, rolled over it, it would melt. Or if the sedimentary rock got pushed down into the planet, through plate tectonics, and it got heated up again, because the Earth is quite warm. And it would melt again and turn into magma. Then its constituent parts would spread apart because they're each, because they're, they're dense. They have different densities and different weights. You know, and some of them would sink, and, some, you know, and they'd separate, and then they'd get extruded back out through volcanoes or oceanic rifts or land fissures, really curious thought about those. Anyways, so that's what sedimentary rocks are. If they don't melt when they get pushed under and they sort of hover a little bit, <laughs> they don't quite reach the melting point, but they reach this weird pressure temperature balancing area, they can get squished and deformed and even kind of go through a weird recrystallization. Recrystallization. They're still crystallized, but they're changing their crystalline structure. And they're forming other rocks. They're morphing. They're metamorphic rocks. 
And again, metamorphic rocks can then melt, spread into their constituent parts into magma. Once they recrystallize, igneous rock. And igneous rock can go to metamorphic too. Um, quartz. It's SiO2. Big, big S, little i, big O, little 2, subscript 2. Silicon dioxide. It's silicon. Or it's quartz. Um, it is pretty much the most plentiful thing on the surface of the earth. It's everywhere. That's why I say my quartzite that I had, quartzite is a metamorphic rock. Quartz is an igneous rock. Um, so, and yeah, so igneous rock, and when that quartz, the big chunk of quartz, gets compressed and it gets pushed down and it gets under that right pressure, but not because I'm going to that when the metamorphic rock, but the pressure and the temperature go down and it moves at a right at a correct angle. It and it'll like bend in on itself, but it will still be solid. This is the thing that people don't get about magma. The mantle. The mantle is not liquid. Not liquid. It's ductile. It's the idea here with ductile stuff is what is silly putty? Is it a liquid or is it a solid? It's ductile. You can form it, but it's still solid. But that's why it's the magma is because it's ductile, but it has technically lost a crystallization. But it's so slow moving it might as well just be solid. Some people uh, some people think glass is the same way. And old glass kinda could be because it doesn't actually have a crystalline structure, so it by definition is not a solid. It's just a really, 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 really slow moving liquid. So that's the rock cycle and a little bit of explanation about all this stuff. Now the quartzite, and I go back to the metamorphic rock, it's still solid and still crystallized. It just has a slightly different crystalline structure. That's why it's quartz. I think it's mixed with something. And the formation that's near us that spits out a lot of the quartzite mean it is they came deposited from the mountains and quartzite's really hard. Quartz is really hard anyways. It's a, it's a not quite diamond, but I think it's a I think it's a six. Six on a scale of ten and ten being diamond, one being talc. Baby powder. Baby powder is a one. And quartz is like five, five or six in diamond, so it's pretty hard. <laughs> I mean like granite not granite. Garnet is eight. Something like that. But quartz is pretty hard. And it gets moved into quartzite, which makes it a little bit harder but not too much. So it's still solid. And when something, when a rock, when magma becomes, when it crystallizes into a rock, whatever rock that is, that's when you can date it. That is the birth of a rock. If it completely melts itself back down into magma, it dies. That's how you date it. So my quartzite from that formation is... 1.6 billion years old. Now, it went through the metamorphic process, but still maintained its solidity and crystalline structure, which considers it a really old rock. Most metamorphic rocks are ridiculously old because metamorph metamorphism takes a long time. Long time. It's, it takes, well, a billion years because it was just quartz to begin with. Quartz kind of breaks down pretty easily, but not so much. It's a, anyways, another video. <laughs> so in a future video, I will talk about that. So yeah, 1.6 billion years. Now geologic time scale. Nice little segue in here. I I looked back on the geologic time scale to see when 1.6 billion years ago was on Earth, and what was happening on Earth at that time. You know, obviously magma came to the surface, crystallized into quartz, and then it got pushed back under and maintained the correct pressure and 
temperature to not com to not liquefy, but to actually maintain ductility, and so it reformed itself. Been over this one. So I'm looking at this thing here, and it's like millions of years going back. Uh, 1.6 billion years is in the Proterozoic period. Probably in the Paleoproterozoic period, because that's one five, one six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so six right there is the border between that and the Mesoproterozoic. Um, I'll put a link to this <laughs> in the thing so you can look at it. And, you know, so let's click the Mesoproterozoic because Wikipedia has lovely little links to everything. So the Mesoproterozoic is a geologic era which occurred between 1. or 1600 MA, um, million annals, million years. So that's 1.6 billion years, and and then 1 billion years. So that's the, it, it had a 600 million year timeline is what the Mesoproterozoic happened in. Uh, the Mesoproterozoic was the first period of Earth's history with a respectable geological record. It's pretty much when we've got a lot of... Uh, we found other things. There's batholiths up in Canada that can be dated back to this big formation of the planet, but another well, future video for that one. Um, yeah. Here's the major events. Some of these don't make... It says here, major events of this era are the formation of the Rodinia supercontinent, the breakup of the Columbia supercontinent, and the evolution of sexual reproduction. Now that happened in between 1.6 billion years ago and a billion years ago. And my rock has been dated to 1.6 to 1.7 billion years old. And I can probably find another rock around here somewhere because like I said, they're, they're everywhere. We live in a, I live in an area where <laughs> stuff like that happens. But you can take this home with you. Um, it's in your probably home. I had a rock, and I can find another one around here. Not a problem. That's older than sex. To hold on, and you know, and now that I, I, I learned this about a month ago, and that's kind of what made me think I should make geology videos because then I can reference things that people just blow mines. I had a rock that has been a solid rock since before sex. I don't know if that blows people. It blew my mind when I saw it. And when I blow my, when things blow my mind, I just sort of giggle incessantly. But back to geologic timeline before I wrap this one up. So there's super eons, eons, eras, and periods. Super eons would be considered the Precambrian, the Phanerozoic, and the Cenozoic. There's three of them. Oh no, the Super Eon was the Precambrian, and then there hasn't been one since. I need to, you know, it'd be too long. So then the eons are things you still probably never heard of. Um, you've probably heard the term Mesozoic. But that's an era. That's actually less than an eon. Uh, the eons are Hadean, Archean, Proterozoic, Phanerozoic, and the Cenozoic. And eras are smaller parts of eons. So it gets even further. And I can explain later about how these each match up, because they're usually about major geological events sort of thing. And eras are, well, like when I was talking about the rock, the Paleoproterozoic, the Mesoproterozoic, and then there's the Neoproterozoic. And those are all eras of the Proterozoic Eon. Now, the scientists that actually, you know, got some, you know, that actually figured out, hey, these rocks are from this time, blah, blah, blah. They got to name it, the, they got to name the eras themselves or something. So things get kind of weird about 
the name of eras, but the most popular era, or period, sorry, the periods they kind of name for themselves. It's sort of like, you know, if the IAU didn't actually do too terribly much, then moons would be named the weirdest things, and we'd have found that weird little tenth planet, and we'd still be named Xena, because the guy who found it is a big Xena fan, because um, guys that don't get out much and don't have an active interpersonal relationship with another person <laughs> starts with a V, if you know what I mean, tend to, uh, yeah, tend to name things like that. You know, I grant you I do name things, that, you know, in my, in WoW, but I don't name it after crazy things like that. I don't try to name an entire planet after a fictional character that has big giant chunks. I'm gay, and I don't even try to name it after really hot guys. I would never find a star and try to name it, oh, I don't know, Freddie Prince Jr. He was in high school, but, yeah. So, periods, now everyone knows this one. Uh, there's a lot of them, like the Carboniferous, the Cambrian, the Ordovician, uh, the Permian, the Devonian. Um, but everyone knows the Triassic, the Jurassic, and the Cretaceous. Those are periods. Those are three periods in the Mesozoic. That's why we were here for the term Mesozoic. And the Mesozoic is an era in the Phanerozoic eon. And Cenozoic era is pretty much up to is modern times. I say modern times, but we're looking back at, you know, 65 million years ago. And 65 million years is like nothing compared to what the planet's been through. The planet is dated at like 4.6 billion years old. And you can do that on a calculator. You can take 4600, divide that by 65. And you can see how many of those chunks of time since the dinosaurs went extinct have happened on the Earth. It's just simple division. Um, the Earth is, to, to the human brain, unfathomably old. We can throw out the numbers, 4.6 billion years old, the pre-Cambrian era ended at, you know, looks to be 500 million years ago. The pre-Cambrian million was still only millions of years ago. That's when that ended. We had whole eras that were, you know, well, like here. The Paleo-Archean Archean, Archean, goes from 3.6 to 3.2 billion years. An era took that much time. An, an era was 200 million years. You know, the, the Proterozoic, or the Mesoproterozoic, was 1.6 to 1,000, 1.6 to 1. That's 600 million years, which is the entire super eon we've been in. Now, let's go down even a little bit further to 23 million years ago. 23 million years ago, we're still in the Cenozoic era, and we started the Neogene period. The Neogene and the Miocene epoch. Something even smaller, epochs. Epochs are sets of are sets within a period. Periods are sets within an era. Era are sets within an eon, and an eon is a set within a super eon. Times divided up really funny. You think hours and daylight savings times is a pain? This, yeah, so we're zooming in here, and we're looking at, and that's the most recent one. We currently have the Cenozoic Era, the Quaternary Period, and the Pleistocene, oh, let's look at Quaternary, that'll actually zoom in further, 
the Quaternary period is the most recent of the three periods of the Cenozoic era. In the geologic time scale of the ICS, it follows the Neogene period, spanning 2.5 plus or so about 2.5 million years ago to the present. 2.5 million years ago is the period we were in. We are in. Yeah, the Quaternary period includes two geologic epochs, the Pleistocene and the Holocene. As proposed, uh, a proposed but as yet third informal epoch, the Anthrop Anthropocene has also gained credence uh, as the time in which humans began to profoundly affect and change the global environment, although its start date is still disputed. Global climate climate change is, you know, still disputed. Um, and you've probably heard a lot of the time things about the if all of time on the earth was a clock, all of human time would be like one tenth of the last second. <laughs> it's it's not even like the like it says here. The Holocene, subdivisions of the quaternary system. The Holocene is zero, so present, to 0 0.0117 million years ago. The Holocene is 11,000 years ago. Eleven thousand years ago, what were humans doing? Beating the head. We were probably beating each other with sticks. We don't even have recorded history back that far, and we're still only in one small section of the giant timeline. Yep, that's creepy. <laughs> so, hope this is a little thing. There's more to learn, and I'll talk about the different types of rocks in future videos. Um. So, I'm signing off.